out on the deck already. I can read. Good evening. Welcome to St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church. We come together today in the presence of God as a community of faith to celebrate the sacred liturgy for the first Sunday of Advent. We offer a special welcome to any visitors. Please stand and take a moment to extend a warm welcome to one another. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, Come Now, Almighty King. Pray. 
Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, as we enter this Advent season, as we seek to come closer to God, we first come to Him, and for the times where we've sinned, we ask our God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Israelites had just returned from exile and were suffering economic hardship and persecution. The prophet expresses their expectation that God will enter human history in a dramatic way and help them. At the end of this reading, we will hear a familiar image. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts, so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways, Behold, you are angry, we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags, and we have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's 
shine forth, rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, Protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right and with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we In the letter-writing style popular in Paul's day, writers would begin by extending greetings and then thank the gods for the blessings they themselves had received. But Paul begins his first letter to the Corinthians by thanking God for the blessings his Corinthian converts have received. It may help to know that the phrase, Day of the Lord, refers to Jesus coming again in glory. The reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You can have a seat. I know you're confused. What's going on here? I was doing some, some praying and um, what I found really helpful about the readings from this weekend um, are this, uh, that uh, the world's a mess. Um, between the bombing again, Israel, Gaza, Ukrainians and, and Russia, people experiencing death on the streets in the United States, homeless, immigration seems out of control. Um, there's just so much going on, and then not just the, the world. I know in my own family, I have, uh, I'm the oldest of five, and I have brothers and sisters who don't speak to each other any longer. I have friends who have children who, for whatever reason, their children have nothing to do with them anymore. I know people who are struggling with addictions, whether it's video games or pornography or alcohol or drugs, and it just seems so overwhelming. And then in the midst of this, we have the prophet Isaiah who's screaming out to God, where are you? Open the heavens, come down, be with us. And it's okay to be that honest with God, not just the prophet Isaiah. It's okay for all of us in our own lives. And, and I've had experiences with some of you where you're saying like, where is God? Where is he? And it's absolutely okay in our own prayer. It doesn't even mean the quiet prayer, but it can be through the day saying, God, where are you? What's going on? Because it can hurt to feel like God's not with us. It can, it can hurt to feel like God is absent. And it's absolutely okay. And listen, I grew up in some of the old church myself where it was like, you can't talk to God like that because the bolt of lightning is going to come and you're gone. And when I say to you, it comes from Scripture, it's not my idea. It is absolutely okay to be angry with God. It is absolutely okay to yell at God and to say, where are you? And so as we gather here tonight, that's the first me message of the season of Advent, to be honest in our prayer with God, to name the elephant in the living room, to say what's going on and where we might be upset with God and where are you? It hurts God. Where are you? And the second message that we have in Advent is the message of waiting, which I would venture to guess that none of us are good at. If we have to wait two seconds longer than we're supposed to, we get unnerved and upset. And yet the message is this, and it's like if you haven't worked out in a long time, or if you do work out and you, you have a new exercise that you're doing, it takes time for the muscles to kind of get used to our body moving. And it's the same way with this muscle of waiting. We can actually say, God, I'm not good at this. God, I don't like to wait. But what you're saying to me in the scriptures this week is to wait for you, to be patient with you to know, to trust that you're coming. And it's okay to say to God, I'm not good at it, Lord. I need help with this, to wait for you, to wait for your 
a sense of your presence, the, one, the time that you're going to act in my family's life, or with my anger, or with whatever's going on, it's okay. This is a different season, and it's a season of challenge. And it goes so fast, three weeks from today, or tomorrow, Christmas Eve. So we have even a shorter season of Advent. But two things, again, one, be honest in your prayer with God. He's not going to strike you dead. And the second thing is to ask for that gift of patience, to wait for him to come, because he will. And just like the people of old, the Jewish people, they didn't expect God to come as a baby. They expected a great warrior to come and to fix things, to throw the Romans out. That's not what happened. God sometimes will come to us in a way that we never expected. Maybe through another person that we never expected would, would bring us a, a word of kindness or a sense of God's presence. I'm throwing a lot out at you tonight, but there's a lot in the scriptures. And I want to present it to you for all of us as a bit of like a, an Advent exercise, to be honest and to ask for the gift of waiting. And to maybe, a third thing, is to expect God to come in a new way. I throw that out to you. I throw it out to myself. And so let's begin tonight. In the quiet, before we come to the Eucharist, Jesus himself comes to us, unbelievably so, in bread and wine. Maybe we begin with being honest with him. Tell him where we are, with him. And if we're not pleased, tell them. Let's tell them. Let's take a quiet moment in the silence. Talk to our God, knowing that he will be here for us, that he is here for us, even if we have to be patient. Dear sisters and brothers, let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I can the forgiveness of sins. And I the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God is with us. He hears us. With confidence, let's bring our prayers to him. Our response is, Come, Lord Jesus, for the church, that in the midst of selfishness, consumerism, and apathy, we may show God's love, patience, and compassion to those around us, 
we pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For world leaders, that they may have the wisdom to protect and promote life, health, and peace for all people, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For the homeless and the homebound, that they may experience love and acceptance through our concern and outreach, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For all who are hungry, that they may experience our Thanksgiving and Christmas generosity all through the year, we pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. For the gift of peace, that we may turn our swords into plowshares and the resources for war into tools for healing, education, and development, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For all who have died, may they be welcomed to paradise by the saints and angels. We remember especially Vincent Oliveri, Sandra Novello, Sister Assunta Rinaldi, Lucille Pelusi, and John Galuli. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. And during this season of Advent, we turn to our Blessed Mother, the one who waited, waited patiently for her child, Jesus, to be born. And so we ask her prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. As we begin our Advent season, we ask our God's blessing on our wreath. Lord, our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of our wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. There are two collections today. The second collection is for the Building Maintenance Fund. Please join in singing our offertory song, Find Us Ready.
that's here and above, built in the kingdom of mercy and love. We must make straight. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O oh Lord, these offerings we make, gather from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, 
whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. And just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy
Will the Eucharistic ministers to the sick and the homebound please come forward? As you go to visit the sick and the homebound, bring with you not only the Eucharist we have celebrated, bring also the Word of God that we have heard. Guarantee our love and our prayers and please ask for prayers for us in return. Go in peace. Let us pray. <clears throat> May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. To remind you that Friday, December 8th, is the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it's a holy day of obligation. Please see the bulletin for the Mass schedule. And lastly, this season is three weeks long, so it's very short. And we have so many opportunities for all of us to get closer to the Lord. In the back of the church, you'll find the little blue books, which are a, a thought, a prayer for each day. You spend five minutes with it. And we also have a copy in Spanish as well. There's also the Catholic app called Hallo, H-A-L-L-O-W, and there's a QR code in the back for that, and you, it's a great tool. There's novenas, rosaries, scripture, there's so much on it. So if you're looking, as crazy as this season is, to get closer to the Lord, at least take advantage of those things. And please see the insert of the bulletin for more <coughs> details. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All are invited downstairs to the cafeteria for a monthly coffee social. Our Noah's Ark family ministry will be there today offering... Oh, that's... Tar I'm sorry. Our closing song is in the day of the Lord. <laughs> Glory. 
dance and sing the glory. 